Hello everybody, this is Windom X, or as I'm known on YouTube, Dynasty Guy. Uh, today, I'm going to be playing a game that uh, a lot of my uh, friends on Xbox Live see me playing a lot. Civilization Revolution. Uh, now, as I said, people see me playing this a lot, and they're always asking me, um, why am I always playing it, what do I like about it? Well, to answer that question, I, uh, I'm going to try and, uh, I'm going to do a playthrough, and I'll try and explain things as I go along. Maybe I'll be encouraging some of you to try this game. So, let's start her up. Alright. Well, I think that was fun. Welcome everybody to Sid Meier's Civilization Revolution. Let's load the sucker up. Yes, yes, I know about my DLC. Uh, this is not important right now. Alright. Uh, now before we get started, I just want to uh, make a uh, quick notification here that uh, if my voice and uh, what happens on screen are in any way... Uh, not properly uh, seemingly synced up. Uh, I want to apologize for that right now. Uh, I'm using two different programs to uh, to do this. Uh, I'm recording my voice on Audacity while I'm uh, using my capture card to record the uh, footage here uh, on a program called ITV. Um, and uh, that causes... Uh, it gets recorded about a second later than it actually appears on my... Sc on my uh, on my TV screen as I'm playing it. So uh, again, if there's anything, if, if some stuff I say seems delayed or not properly timed, that's the reason why. All right, now to business. Civilization Revolution. Uh, we're gonna do a single player game. We'll start a new game. All right. Now, uh, I could do this on the hardest difficulty, Deity, uh, Deity, pardon me, 
but uh, for the sake of um, explaining this, I'll kick it down a level to Emperor level. All right. Select your civilization. Liberality. Yes. Uh, there are a number of different groups you can choose here. Uh, choose from here. Each one of these was historically a great, powerful civilization in history. Uh, we have Julius Caesar with the Romans, Cleopatra of the Egyptians, Alexander the Great with the Greeks, Queen Isabella of Spain, Bismarck representing the Germans, Catherine leading the Russians, Mao Zedong as the Chinese, and while not really an ancient civilization, Abraham Lincoln here will represent the Americans. Uh, Ieyasu Tokugawa, Shogun of Japan, Napoleon leading the French, Gandhi, not historically a leader of the country, but a very, very important figure nonetheless. He shall represent the Indians. Saladin, leading the Arabs. Uh, if I mispronounce this, I apologize. Uh, Montezuma of the Aztecs. Shaka, Shaka Zulu, leading the Zulu. Uh, the Zulu... Um, are pretty much um, an African nation. Uh, I believe the they were... Uh, I think there were a bunch of tribes in Africa and um, his stood out amongst them and possibly even united them. Uh, don't quote me on that, but that's his backstory in the Zulu. Uh, moving on. Genghis Khan of the Mongolians. And of course, Queen Elizabeth I of the English. All right. <laughs> now, uh, to pick a team, um, I'm going to go with good old reliable U.S. of A, the Americans, and Mr. Abraham Lincoln here. All right, well, this loads up. We're going to be treated to a nice intro sequence. As soon as it decides to load. There we go. My liege, we stand at the beginning of a new age. Our people have forsaken the nomadic ways of their fathers and have settled in a city. They look to you to guide them into the uncertain future. My liege, I believe that if we wish to survive, we must make our city strong and prosperous. And once we have grown, we must send settlers to build even more cities across the land. Cities are indeed the most powerful of all human creations. For it is only within cities that we can create the mighty armies needed to defend ourselves and to bring defeat to our foes. My liege, our fate is in your hands. Will we be a warlike people, striking fear into the hearts of other nations? Will we be peaceful and cultured, an advanced nation of philosophers and artists? Or will our wise men and scientists chart a course that will bring us into a glorious future of astounding science and unimagined technology? What will the future hold for us? Will we be yet another forgotten people, a mere footnote in the annals of history? Or will you prove to be the greatest ruler the world has ever known and build for us a civilization for the ages? A civilization to stand the test of time. My liege, our people await your orders. All right. Welcome to Civilization Revolution. 
All right. Now, uh, before I make any moves here, let's just uh, kind of uh, give a bit of an overview of what's going on. Uh, if you'll direct your attention to the bottom right hand of the screen, uh, you'll see a year. The year is currently 4000 BC. So, um, what's hap what the basis of this game is that I have to create and create, build, and lead a civilization from the Stone Age here in 4000 BC all the way to the modern era, which can uh, go as far as the year 2050 AD. So this game is played over the course of 6,050 years. Alrighty. Now, as for what we see here on the, uh, as a, as for what we see here, my, uh, two characters here, so to speak, on, uh, actually I should not characters, I should say units that we have here on the screen. Uh, I have my settlers, and since I'm the Americans, I also start out with what is called a great person. Uh, I'll go into that later. Alright, my settlers. Uh, we're going to use these to build our first city. Now, usually it's uh, pretty advisable to just build exactly where the game starts you, but sometimes I like to try and move around a little bit and see if I can't uh, find a better spot to build. Sometimes uh, that's a gamble that sometimes it pays off, sometimes it ends miserably. But uh, first we're going to move our explorer around. All right. Um, let's see here. You know, since I'm uh, doing a teach uh, a walkthrough here, I'll play this uh, the simple way and build my city right here where I started. The city of Washington, founded in 4000 BC. All right. So I have my city of Washington now. Uh, if you look at all those logos, uh, that green, uh, that number two that's in the green box, uh, is how much population that city has. Um, with populate you with population, your city can do can uh, do more and becomes uh, and becomes more valuable to you. So with only two populations, that means I can only make use of two of these squares that you see around my city. Uh, now let's explain these. We have uh, squares are divided into three categories. We have um, our building tiles here, which are the hammers. These are what you use to uh, construct things, uh, create units, build buildings, and create wonders, which I'll go into later. We also have our food squares. Uh, by having spaces dedicated to food, um, if you look at the top of the screen there, um, food increases your population. Uh, without any food coming into the city, your city cannot grow in population. So food is very, very important. And then what we have here are my science squares. Uh, you'll use these to research technology. Research technology, and if you press the Y button, it switches over to gold, which you can use to uh, bring gold into your city's eco into your uh, civilization's economy. Um, your civilization has a shared gold pool, so um, you don't. Have, so uh, it's not. It's simple. It's pretty simple in the fact that uh, you don't. You don't need to maintain a budget in each individual city. You have a shared economy. All right. Now, our first objective is we need to create some warriors. A warrior is useful for both defending our city and for um, hunting barbarian villages. Yes. Without warriors, we need to go exploring the world. So, we're just going to, uh, it's going to take three turns for Washington to produce the first one. So, and I've already had, had my great explorer move, so we're going to end my turn. The turn is now over, and beginning of the next one. As you can see, it has become 3900 BC. Uh, each turn makes time go by, so, uh, and, but time goes slower as, uh, your civilization progresses. So, in the beginning here, it's going to go, one turn will be a hundred years, then it'll slow down to fifty years, uh, then twenty-five, then ten, then five, and then eventually it slows down all the way to two. Um, and the represent, uh, the theory behind that is that, um, 
as we become more and more, more and more advanced, it takes less time to progress. So, um, now um, on turn two. Uh, our warrior still needs two more turns to be completed in the city. However, we have our great explorer here who can move. So, we're going to move him to this little tent you see here with the smiley faces. That is a friendly village. If you move in, if you move a unit to that, you'll get a reward. Our display of advanced tools has amazed the villagers. In response, the villagers have the villagers shower us with gifts worth 25 gold pieces. The villagers claim that they've been troubled by a barbarian village that is not too far away. Yes. Now, early game, those barbarian villages you see there are crucial. We need to hunt down and destroy as many of those as we possibly can. All right. Now, you'll also notice how that tent uh, transformed into these interesting-looking trees. Uh, those trees are... A, that is a resource. Oak. Um, at, with certain technologies, you gain access to resources. And what resources do for you is that they enable you to get bonuses towards food, science, culture, which I'll uh, explain a little bit later as well. Uh, production, science, it all depends on... Um, what the uh, resource is, what the resource, what the resource is, and they'll benefit f again. Um, they'll benefit food, production, culture, science, or gold. Uh, oak there is a very good one, as early on that gives you a huge boost in production. All right, now we're just gonna have our uh, explorer move a little bit more. End the turn. Let's see. A message from Norte Chico of the Barbarians. Windamex. We barbarians laugh at your excessive height and need for culture. You will soon feel the sting of our pointy blowguns. Um, I agree with what the statement down there says. Goodbye, my little friend. I will deal with you later. Yes. Yes. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out here... Um, as you see when my... Oh, hold on a second. Uh, we have discovered a great river worth 10 gold. What shall we name this natural wonder? Alright, so my great explorer there has found a river. Uh, I can name it the Mississippi, the Mojave, the Erie, or I can enter my own customized name. For the sake of time, we're going to make it the Erie River. Alright, now as I was trying to say, uh, I want you to notice that each time my uh, explorer moves into these clouds that they spread apart. Those clouds are the fog of war. Um, being that I'm a primitive civilization, I have no idea what the world around me looks like. And I can only learn it by going exploring. So, exploring the world is very, very important. Alright, now, three turns have passed in the years 3700 BC. Our warrior has finally been completed, and now we need to send him off into the world to do some damage. We're sending him straight for that barbarian village where the Norte Chico threatened us with their pointy blowguns. So, he only moves one square per turn, so it's going to take him three turns to get there. Or if you're going by the turn count, it's going to take those warriors 300 years to get to that barbarian village. All right, we ooh, we have met another civilization. Greetings from Cleopatra of the Egyptians, most noble Lord Windamex. How wonderful it is to meet you at last. I offer you my hand in peace and friendship. Will you accept my generous offer? Let's see. Yes, let us have peace. No, this continent belongs to me. Or I must consult with my advisors. Let's ask my advisors what they think. Oh. Alright everyone, uh, allow me to introduce you to my foreign advisor. Uh, the Egyptian leader, Cleopatra, appears to be an ambitious upstart intent on world domination. Parentheses, much like yourself, sire. Yes, I want to conquer this world. They claim to have inherited an ancient wonder. An ancient wonder. Apologize. And you'll have a full report prepared as for me as soon as possible. Thank you for the information. 
Alright, now I have no interest in war, so... Let us have peace, Cleopatra. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Cleopatra. I enjoy a peaceful, fruitful civil uh, friendship with you. For now. Alright. Now, we have another warrior set to go. So we're going to send him against that barbarian village. Uh, now we've created two warriors, so that should suffice for now. So I'm going to switch my resources from production... Sorry? From production to food. So, uh, if you look at the top of the screen... For food, I'll have a population growth in Washington in five turns, or 500 years if you're going by the uh, year counter at the bottom right. All right, let's move around a little bit more and look at what we have here. My explorer seems to have found another friendly village. Our display of woven fabrics has amazed the villagers. In response, they provide us with a caravan of trade goods. Excellent. So let's see. The villagers seem to believe there are four ancient artifacts still undiscovered. Artifacts. I will explain those as I find them. Alright. So, what can this caravan they gave do to us? Do for us? Well. It's useful for two things. One, it has a movement of three squares per turn, so early in the game it can be useful for exploration. However, if we... What the intent of a caravan is, you send it... You send it to another city, and you'll get gold. So, if we were to send it in to Thebes, we'd be able to get some gold, and they'd also receive a small amount. So, it's mutually beneficial to both. Uh, now, I think I will send it there, but I do have some interest in exploration first. And I'm glad I made that exploration move because it has revealed the location of another barbarian village. Uh, which I'll have my warriors... My warriors converge on once they finish with the first two. This one... And this one. Uh, it'll take some time, but they'll get there and I doubt any civilizations will beat me to it. Alright. Uh... But let's send you over here. And that does it for this turn. Alright, we can move again. Aha! Another friendly village. Our, demonstra our demonstration of forged weapons has awed the villagers. In response, the villagers shower us with gifts worth 25 gold pieces. And they claim to have been troubled by another barbarian village, which is not too far away. This is very good. Knowing the location of this many barbarian villages early game is excellent. Because the more of them we destroy, the more bonuses and prizes we can get. Alright. Tipu Sultan, my great explorer, my great person. Uh, we're going to send him back towards Washington. Uh, actually, no, we're not. Scratch that. If I send him to Washington, uh, you'll see that that barbarian village there has three flags in it. That means there's three barbarian units in it. Um, when they reach three flags, they will come out of their little village and start attacking. Which means if I send Tipu Sultan anywhere close to them, they're going to immediately try and steal him. Uh, so I'm going to leave Tipu Sultan there in the coal resource that that friendly village was covering. All right. Our warriors have finally reached that barbarian village. We have an attack strength of 1 to their defense of 0 0.5. The advantage lies with my warriors. So now it is time for us to attack! Excellent. The first battle goes to my warriors. Oh, 
that barbarian village is at 3-2. All right. Uh, something I do want to notice, though, about that um, battle I just had with the barbarian villages, uh, you'll see my warrior unit there only has two guys as opposed to the original three it had. Um, we took casualties in that battle, so we're gonna have to heal them next turn. Now I could attack again, and while I still have the advantage, that's no guarantee of victory. And a defeat this early on in the game is actually very, very disastrous. You cannot lose this early in the game. It is a massive setback. So, we're going to heal. Tipu Sultan, you need to... S Actually, you know what? I take that back. You do have a use. I'll send you on a little more explore... On uh, some greater exploration. As for my caravan, we're sending you into Thebes. The caravan has arrived in Thebes. Total profit, 50 gold. And the Egyptians collected an import tax of 20 gold. So I got 50, they got 20. Mutually beneficial to both of us. Alright. Now. Oh, it ended the turn automatically for me. And my economy is now booming. My gold reserves are over 100. As a result, a settler unit appears. The next economic milestone will occur when we have over 250 gold. Now, milestones are very important with economics. As you reach economic milestones, you get bonuses. And it's also one of the ways you can win this game. Uh, I will go into that again once we've... Once we've established the basis here, I'll go into what our actual objectives for the game should be and how we can win it. So, for now, let's have our warriors engage again. Lawless victory. We have captured the, North, the village of Norte Chico, and his village... Oh, I'm sorry. We've captured the village of his brother-in-law, pardon me. And he had a collection of valuable trade goods. A caravan. And he also seems to know the location of another city. The Indians have a wealthy city in this vicinity. Maybe I should engage them. Perhaps I shall, Norte Chico. Perhaps I shall. Ooh, and he gave me more oak. Interesting. Uh, I could go another square, but since I don't know what's there, I'm going to hold off. For the moment, though, we have a brand new settler unit. So, if you remember the beginning of the game, I had a settler. And I built Washington with it. So, with another settler, what can I do? Build another city. And building cities is exactly what we want to do. We want to grow the power of our... We want to grow... We want to be big. We want to be powerful. But we need a location. Where could we build? Uh, I will admit, I like these two oak squares very, very much. But I'm not overly crazy about uh, the location. Uh, let me think for a moment. How many science am I getting? I'm only... Okay, I'm getting three from that. Um, this can be, this can be a, this can be, uh, um, this can slow you up a little bit sometimes, because building your city, you don't just want to plop your city down anywhere. It's very, very important to build your city in a place that's going to be rich, that's going to be, uh, rich in, rich in resources, uh, that's going to be rich in resources, or... I mean, just overall be very beneficial, whether it's having a ton of food so the city grows quickly, having access to a ton of resources, or allowing strategic access to some other part of the world. Uh, now, in this case, with the second city, you want to have a place that is typically, um, that is typically fairly rich in resources, but also um, just able to grow and be beneficial very, very early on. 
Uh, the second city is always a very important one. So... Let me think. Um, okay, you know what? Uh, I'm playing a teaching game, so I will keep this simplified. I'll have my settlers go to a nice simple location that's not too far away. Aha! Another friendly village. Our display of advanced tools has amazed the villagers. Our display of advanced tools has amazed the villagers. In response, the villager villagers shower us with gifts worth 25 gold pieces. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to apologize for all my stuttering. Um, it can be a little tricky sometimes for me to uh, hear myself talk because um, I'm using a Turtle Beach mic right now and when I'm in the headset, uh, it just makes it hard for me to hear myself. Four artifacts. Hello. Greetings from Gandhi of the Indians, most, Lord no most noble Lord Windham X. How wonderful it is to meet you at last. I offer you my hand in peace and friendship. Will you accept my generous offer? Yes, Gandhi. Let us have peace. Excellent. All right. Uh, let's have Tipu Sultan go on that. Let's see, uh, going back to Washington for a moment. Ooh, as you can see, our city has grown to three population. We can now access three of our Washington squares. So we're going to keep it exactly as it is. Two food squares and we'll have one production. But I do not need another warrior. So I'm going to have them create a galley. That'll take a lot of time to create, but it'll enable me to store up my production for something better. Let's see, do I want to end my turn? I will in just a moment. There's some things I want to look at. That could be useful later. Oh ho! Uh, I just want to point your—I just want to take your attention here, real fast, to this uh, tree square. I have my magnifying glass on. Do you see how it's shaded gray like that? It's shaded because there's another civilization there using it. Who is it? Well, I think we'll find out in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and and look forward to future episodes of Civilization Revolution. Uh, the game will get more fast-paced as things go on. I apologize for uh, if this seems slow. Um, it's just with all the explanations and everything. All right, YouTubers. Thanks for watching, and take care.